Uh, welcome to um, Lean Agile London. Thanks for everyone who had come here. Wow, what a crowd. Um, uh, you know, I, I hope I can do some justice today, hopefully. Uh, and if not, you can tell me otherwise. So my talk's going to be about um, flamingos, actually. So it was going to be about flow metrics with some colorful flamingos, but it's going to be about colorful flamingos with a touch of some flow metrics that some of you may already know about, so I won't bore you with the detail. Um, I'll tell you a bit of a story, actually, um, about, about flamingos. In fact, move too quick. So flamingos um, are really beautiful creatures in the wild. They're in about five out of the seven continents of the world. Um, they have this beautiful flaming pinkish colour um, and they feed on crustaceans, uh, small al algae, 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 um, and they, um, they, they digest essentially um, these, these produce which, which creates a cartonoid um, that gives them that pinkish colour. So uh, a pink flamingo in the wild is a it's a healthy flamingo, absolutely. And similar to our organizations, when we see some of the flow metrics or, or, or the way our organizations are conditioned, we can see whether they're pink or are they more lighter in color. And therefore, they might need a bit of, uh, a bit of some support and help by change agents or even from within. So with that in mind, um, why uh, should I tell you the story about flamingos? Um, there we go. So, a few years ago, I worked with an organization um, and I happened to be talking about flow and I probably bored the crap out of most of the executives, the scrum masters, the teams probably hated me as well by the end, I think, at some point. <laughs> but there came a point where I was um, having a conversation with a friend and that friend in the organization um, really got it. They really got it. They were a senior manager in the organization and they decided to think about metaphors and they read a blog about how flamingos in the wild uh, operate, essentially. And he came out with this concept called the pink flamingo strategy. And the reason why he called it pink flamingo is he wanted to attract attention by those above and those around and the teams as well. And I find that um, in storytelling and metaphors, there's greater impact. Data visualization, visualization charts, flow charts, if you will, are pretty sexy too, but they kind of bore the crap out of people. And we've all seen it, right? Put your hands up if you've been in an organization as a change agent, an executive, a manager, or essentially just a, a coach, really. And you've gone into a meeting, you've, you've produced some kind of a data visualization, some metrics and some measures, and you've basically lost someone about you know, 30 seconds in. Yeah? OK, I see a few. I see a lot of friends there. Good. Um, so this person really inspired me to, to do a talk about flamingos, so uh, credit to them. Um, they've asked to be not be named yet, but hopefully we can edit the video at some point once here. they build the courage to be named, hopefully. So um, a little about Little's Law. I'm not going to bore you to death. Put your hands up if you know a uh, even some form of understanding about um, Professor John Little's Law. OK, cool. OK, so we've got a mixture of room, about like 40%. <laughs> Pratik was actually right, by the way. I had a conversation with Pratik, who many of you may or may not know. He's uh, part of the Pro Kanban community. And he said about 40% of the audiences generally um, you know, have some form of understanding of flow. So you were right, mate. You know, well done. Your bet's paid off. So um, a little bit about Little's Law. So work in process is one of the levers, if you will. Um, and what, what Professor Little said many, many years ago, decades ago, is that there is a, there is a relationship between work in process, essentially the amount of work that we've got in our stacks, your backlogs, the options you have, the bets you're trying to make, um, the things in your mind even, or even the queues at Starbucks or any other coffee vendor you see. The bigger the queue, um, it's going to take longer to get your coffee. Um, so cycle time is the second lever, if you will. And this is the time it takes to get something done. So whatever process you have, whether it's Scrum, Kanban, you know, you know, name, name a few agile you know, boards, really. But when you start your work, and from Geordie's conversation earlier this morning, he talked about ignition time. When do you actually start that thing that was a concept that you have? And when do you actually get it to done? Or when you get it to learn, essentially? So cycle time is a total elapsed time between two points. Um, you can have lead time and all that stuff, but I won't get into all that right now. And the third thing is the easy one. I call it the, the side effect. I think Dan Vicanti, I've heard him in a few conversations, and uh, Jose Casal as well, they talk about throughput as, as almost the third thing. So if you get your work in process sorted out, or at least manage it better, you balance your priorities more effectively, um, 
you're gonna, it's going to have some form of impact upon your cycle time, the time it gets to get things done, and it will have, eventually have an impact upon the amount of work you get done. So throughput is the metric that focuses on, focuses on the amount of stuff that we get done. What is the rate uh, in which we try and deliver some form of value to our customers? It could be like 10 projects per month, it could be 10 stories you know, per quarter, and so on and so forth. So usually expressed as an amount and a unit of time. Um, why am I telling you all of this? I want to invite you to four key themes. We've got flamboyance as the first one. Um, flamboyance in the wild for flamingos is when you see a flock of these beautiful pink creatures and they're normally flocking together. It's an amazing uh, visual spectacle if you go search it somewhere, if you watch a David Attenborough, I'm sure some of you might not want to do that, right? You know, but if you do like a good British voice and you want to see some beautiful flamingos, go check them out for yourself. Um, and they create this kind of scene where, where most of them are kind of dancing, really. They've got these kind of repertoires of court, courtship um, and they're showing, inviting people. So normally in the wild, um, even in the zoo actually, you will see one of the flamingos begin what we call the show. And they either flap their wings, but they slowly raise their head and start bobbing like this, you know. Um, and when they start bobbing their heads, it creates movement. It creates some form of invitation. And the question I've got for you is, what invitation are you sending in your organization to your teams, to individuals, to the people you coach, maybe to the executives that don't even want to see you, but actually what invitation are you providing? Are you providing multiple, multiple invitations? Are you just seeing them once at the coffee stand? Or are you actually trying different signals? What dance practices are you changing and shifting in your organization to create some form of change and movement? Um, also, it's very true for flamingos is what they eat is what they are. So the more they eat of this beautiful, um, you know, uh, the actual place where they inhabit, um, if they have the algae, if they have the, these crustaceans or you know, um, small plants and animals, the more pinker their feathers get, the more pinker their eyes get, the more pinker their, these long stems of their legs get. So the question I've got for you is, um, uh, how are you living in your organization? What are you doing um, every day? And we heard about Geordie's four types of reasons. And what do you practice in habits? Essentially, what habits are you creating that are creating the conditions that are uh, operating in your organization. Maybe you're creating the practices that are um, creating busyness. Maybe business is a system optimization goal for you. Or you're actually producing um, the focus and the collective attention and effort on value and what really matters for customers. Collective gazes um, is what you see in the picture. So you see most of the flamingos pointing at a certain way. You will see this movement um, within they're courtships. So the way I see this reflecting in our organization is, are we aligned? Do we have a shared understanding? Alignment is not enough. Uh, John Cutler, JC, on LinkedIn, I think he recently wrote something about, um, you can have an organization that's aligned to particular goals and objectives. OKRs, you know, name any KPI. Um, I call them, you know, key, uh, key performance irritators. Um, you know, name a few, right? You know, but you might not have shared understanding. You might have you know, an executive or a board or some kind of town hall where the KPIs are kind of released right, every quarter or every year as you do. And here's the financial plan for the year. Here's the program plan for the year. But what are the interaction effects of all of that? You know, how are we actually making that purpose real? Um, and what do we need to sense to have some form of direction? Because bobbing heads is one thing in flamingos, but they normally have a purpose. So when they flap their wings, they're normally inviting a particular person or group of people to come closer to them. So be more like flamingos, flamboyance. Uh, and just to give you an example of what flamboyance prep might look like, um, I talked about lightweight methods, you know, not, not too much um, you know, going on. But for me, flamboyance is about communities of practices. It's about being in those spaces where, where things have not been heard yet. Or where are you inviting yourselves? Where are you pushing the boundaries a little bit to get into those conversations with people at the social level? And uh, these pink flamingos, as you can see, are social birds, they're social creatures. They actually have friends, and they have best friends, they mate for life. Um, they have the ability to identify one another. So when they actually go out and they try to find some food for their little chicks, they're able to identify where their, um, where their flock is, actually. So they've got, they're quite smart creatures, as you can see. So the question I've got for you is, how are you identifying the signals in your flock? How do you know that someone actually needs some help? 
Uh, how are you seeing the visual cues um, that better interaction is required in your flock to create a system of change? Um, I'm sorry, I, I should have mentioned, this is just a nine thing, thing I've done for Adidas. So the executives at Adidas asked me, Haroon, we need 30 minutes of your time and you need to tell us everything about flow. You are the enterprise flow coach. So show us how to flow, right? So I was like, how am I going to do this, right? So I had 15 executives, um, some Germans and others more international, English not being the second language. What do I do? I talk about flamingos. Um, and they actually had some resonance for everyone. And everyone has got, or well, most people have children, some don't, that's okay too. And everyone's been to a zoo or some form of, you know, watch a documentary. It really resonated for them. And these nine things are just essentially the top three about strategy and value. The middle part's about cycle time, dependencies and bottlenecks. We've all got some of those. Put your hands up if you've got, um, if you're bottleneck free. <laughs> oh, you're bottleneck free. Wow. Okay, you've got one person. Brilliant. Tell me what you do, right? So the bottleneck normally starts at the top, as we heard from many, you know, many, you know, geniuses around the world. Well, some bottlenecks start at the top. Um, for me, um, yeah, something like this is very simple. So you can ask people to easily vote to say, what's your top three problems right now in your organisation, and they will vote with their feet. So I've done an exercise like this with Adidas, and um, I want you to just, just to guess from the list on the right hand side, which one of these statements is your top priority? If you had a limited amount of budget and cost and effort and attention in your organization, where would you, where would you place the bucks? So interestingly for most executives and actually over 500 teams I've worked with over the last seven years, it's the second to last one, work in process. Too much work in process, we're overwhelmed Haroon, we've got too much going on. So in 15 minutes, these executives told me what, they've, what the problems are in the organisation, and we backed up with data and storytelling along, you know, over 500 teams. Second most important thing for me when I look at transformations, and when I say transformations, I'm being specific here, which are transformations which are focused on agility and responsiveness to change, and the ability to focus on flow as a strategic driver to bring about some form of change. So when we're looking at flow metrics or um, measures that are, are aiming to produce you know, better value for our customers, I find that flow is one of those kind of you know, strategies that hook into our organizations. Um, as I mentioned before, reminder, Flamingos have got over 160 dance repertoires. Um, maybe in your organization, you've got different practices, methods and ideas floating around. Um, imagine if you're on the dance floor with your organization and are you the one step, two step kind of person? You're attracting attention, or maybe you're the, you're the break dancer that scares the crap out of everybody. Um, don't do that, of course. So for me, it was a bit like that going into that Adidas executive meeting. Is that do I dance break, do I break dance, not dance break? Do I break dance or do I just subtly go with the rhythm? Rhythm is important because it builds momentum. What momentum are you building in your organization? Are you increasing momentum in cycle time and reducing your momentum in story point thinking? Are you building momentum in the interactions between um, the teams and the leaders and the managers? Or are you uh, having the Gantt charts and really you know, trying to throw them away? Are you reducing your momentum in spaces where it's more uh, simple methods to deal with complex problems? Which momentum are you building? Um, I've already talked about that, which is about what the collaboration affects within Rhythm. Um, what does better flow look like for you in your organisation? Um, you might have seen the actionable Agile stand um, in, the, in the foyer. Um, feel free to have a shout with them. For me, it's going back to what Georgie said, how can you outsource your work? So some charts are this, for example, which is a cycle time scatter plot, which shows you on the x-axis dates from left to right and you've got cycle time, the time it takes to get things done from the bottom to the top, how can we visualize our data better? How can we easily extract data so that the easy part is done so we can actually tell stories? How can we share our stories? What's actually happening here? I won't go into the charts. There is a talk by Julie, I think, if she's in the room, um, about flow metrics and Monte Carlo simulation, so I won't bore you with that. Um, the third thing is filter. How do we deliberately stumble upon find nutrients, one of the things that flamingos do is that they put their head in this sludgy, salty lakes where they reside and, they, and their heads are actually upside down. So the question I've got for you is how are you looking inside your organizations to find those nutrients? What are the value 
or the, or the delivery um, or the value that you get from delivery that you're not finding right now? How are you looking in tune into your flock and finding these nutrients? Um, and the other thing they do, they, they, they're, they're filter feeders, so that they process um, their food and their, and their water through their bills, and through the bills they've got a system where they, where they create the right conditions to get the pinkish feather. So the more pinkish the flamingo, the healthier, healthier the flamingo, right? Um, and we talked about attitudes. Um, one of the things I find about throughput and filtering, right, is that I find cycle times, the time to get things done, and work in process balances. I mean, essentially, the amount of stuff that we've got on our options backlogs or bets far more important than throughput. Why? Throughput is, is one of those flow metrics, right, that it's quite subjective because you could get 10 things done per unit of time, but it doesn't mean squiggly dod. The customer metrics, your product metrics, uh, the effectiveness of, of how the customer is feeling, um, you know, prices and that, all that stuff is far more interesting. So the throughput trends that may, may help you find that, but we really don't know the value of things. We, we think we do. We really think we do, but we really don't. We're actually not that smart yet. Maybe AI may, may change that, um, but I don't, think, I don't see it right now. So once we've got some level of filtering going on, the next part for me is about augment, augmentation. What do I mean by that? It implies that we've got a system, we've got a foundation in place where we're managing, where we're managing our priorities, we're managing our bets, we've got more healthier flow of cycle times. Um, you know, we've got rhythm, we've got dance, we've got different dance practices going on. And now we're in a space where we can actually zoom out a little bit. We can build upon what we've already got. We can respect the past. There's many change agents that come before us. Many consultancies come before us as change agents. How do we respect the past without really, you know, being harmful for what's already there? Sometimes as change agents, we can go into a, an organization and it's actually we do more damage. How can we respect the actual space there? Um, and what I want to talk about here is three things, really. Um, how do we navigate new paths? So now your team or your team of teams or a product area has got some level of flow going through the system, the movement of value is more effective right now. How do you branch out? So these beautiful birds, what they do is once the lakes dry out, you have this salty, sludgy mud space and the chicks begin to grow and they begin to fly. And essentially they find the next location to habitat um, by, um, by just really, no one actually wrote, knows right now. I think I've watched so many David Attenborough videos. They actually don't know how these pink flamingos, or these flamingos actually, go find the next, um, the next area to, to really reside in. Um, but what we do know is that they, they travel in the dark. So you'll see these flamingos in the night, you know, over, over these beautiful locations, finding the next location. How are you building that, how are you building that in your organization? What new horizons are you finding? Are you going on a path and fixed on it? Or are you navigating and adjusting your path like these flamingos do and finding those, um, those saline lakes where there's nutrients? I'll just skip through that because I know um, I've got a few minutes left, I think. How are we doing on time? Yeah. Six minutes. Cool. I'll just skip through that. Um, so I want to leave you with a few things. Flow like a flamingo, but flow like a pink flamingo. Why? Um, interactions matter at all levels. So, um, big fan of flight levels and the interaction effects of how flight level one, two, and three work. If you want to know more about that, you can find that out in Klaus's talk, I think, tomorrow. Um, but for me, it's not just about being there. You can be in a meeting, you can be in a workshop, you can be in a space with other people, but the interaction that you have with those people really matters. You can either switch them off, or you can bob your head and you can attract some attention. What attention are you really attracting? Um, Co-create rhythm. Rhythm is important. Momentum, building momentum is important. What rhythm are you producing in your organization right now? What rhythm do you really want to have? And what rhythms don't exist right now for you? Maybe there's more than 160 for you. So think about how are you building that movement um, um, in your organization? Uh, as I mentioned, you know, Flamingos have got over 160 practices of dance courtships. Um, how are you mastering things? By the way, flamingos, it can take them up to 20 years to master all 160 or more. They have nine signature moves. The bobbing head is just one. There's the flapping of the wings, there's many others as well. What practices, what efforts are you making to focus on continuous integration, continuous delivery, product discovery, you know, looking at the, your customer metrics? How are you coming closer to your user even? 
Are there many chains in the, uh, in the pathway of your value stream between developer and customer? How are you bringing these people together? Maybe you're not in software development, maybe you're in marketing, maybe you're in HR. How are you getting closer to your customer? Who are your users? Filter the crustaceans like a flamingo. Find where those nutrients are. Shift the mud if you need to, like the flamingo. Find out those obstacles and, uh, and move between those lakes. Augment to establish new ground. Find out where your new horizon is. Don't just focus on the current lake. You've got a good product right now. In a few years, it will not be. What are you doing right now? What investment is your organization making? What investment is your team making in finding out what customers really, really want? It's a Spice Girls question, right? What do you want? What do you really, really want? And this, is, for me, is very important. Um, a pink flamingo is a? Healthy flamingo. Healthy flamingo. I've been Haroon. Thank you very much. If you're interested to know about flamingos or you want to have a conversation, um, you can hit me up on email or you can find me on LinkedIn um, and I'll be around for the next couple of days. Um, I thank you very much for, for, your, um, for your patience, by the way, and seeing some colourful flamingos. <laughs>